Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. SpaceX has scrubbed what was set to be a historic mission, which would have sent two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. The mission, called Demo-2, would have been the first time a commercial aerospace company launched a crew into space. It's been almost a decade since the last crewed space launch from U.S. soil. Veteran astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley are now set to launch on Saturday. For more, let's bring in Lauren Grush. She's the senior science reporter at The Verge, covering all things space. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the decision to cancel this launch came at the last minute. What factored into that? So it really just boiled down to weather at the launch site. There were some electrified clouds in the area, which is really not great news for the potential for lightning to hit the vehicle if it launched. And it really was down to the last second. I heard on the mission control that they thought that the weather was going to clear up 10 minutes after the launch time. But this launch had to take place at 4.33 p.m. Eastern time. So the fact that it wasn't cleared at that specific time was the reason we had to, to say we had to punt until Saturday. It's always tricky there with those afternoon thunderstorms that pop up in that area in Florida. Um, more broadly here, Lauren, uh, let's talk about how we got to this point, where we now have in the United States of America a private company sending U.S. astronauts into space. Yes. I mean, for all of spaceflight history, it's been the government, not private companies, that have sent uh, humans into space. Uh, the government had complete control, design, you know, operation of all of these vehicles. But with this program, the commercial crew program, NASA decided, okay, we're going to try and become a customer instead of the overseer. So they tasked two companies, SpaceX and Boeing, with creating these new spacecraft that could take humans to and from the International Space Station. And SpaceX, you know, came out ahead in that race. And they're, they're, I mean, they're there. They're ready to launch. Um, we just have to wait a couple more days for that to happen. It was not an easy road, though, Lauren, to get to this point. What were some of the challenges that SpaceX faced just to get here to the point where they were ready, albeit uh, obviously at the mercy of the weather, but they were ready to have a successful launch? Yeah, it's been a very long road to get here. You know, they were first awarded this contract back in 2014. And so, yeah, it's been six years of constant testing. And there have been some hiccups along the way, too. You know, last year, a test version of their Crew Dragon capsule actually exploded during a ground test. A couple of their rockets have also failed during uh, missions as well. But at the same time, there have been really great successes. Last year as well, SpaceX sent a test version of the Crew Dragon to the space station, just like it's going to do now, though that one didn't have any crew on board. And that flight went flawlessly. And they've also tested out other systems as well. They've done tons of parachute testing. So yes, it's been a long road to get here, but they, they're ready and it, I'm really excited to see how it, how it goes. Yeah, I am too. I cannot wait. This has been so fun to watch. But as you noted, those challenges, those setbacks that they've experienced, it took so long just to get here. But tell us, Lauren, more about this actual mission. When the astronauts get to the International Space Station, what is it that their main job or jobs are going to be? And how long are they actually going to be there? So first and foremost, this is a flight test, right? So they are trying to get a good sense of what the Crew Dragon is like, what it's like to fly. You know, when they actually are on the Crew Dragon, they're going to be, it's going to be a while before they get to the International Space Station. So they're going to try out sleeping on the Crew Dragon. There's also a toilet on the Crew Dragon that we have been asking them quite a, a bit about, and they might try that out as well, since it is a long trip to the station. Then once they get there, they're going to dock. So the Crew Dragon has the capability to automatically dock with the space station, and they're going to test out that, that uh, maneuver as well. And then once they're up there, they're going to do what astronauts do when they're on the station. They're going to do research, perhaps even do some spacewalks if NASA needs them to. Really, it just, it's all you know, performing the task that NASA needs them to perform. And then once that's done, NASA is going to make the determination for when they come home. And that will be another test of the Crew Dragon to see if that capsule can actually safely return them back to Earth uh, using parachutes and a heat shield. 
So former NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver told The Atlantic, quote, I'm not sure risking so many lives to launch two people to the same place we've been going for 20 years should be prioritized. So what is it that NASA and SpaceX are both saying about why they wanted to move forward with this mission in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic? Right. So first of all, I believe Lori did end up changing her opinion just because the pandemic has been going on for so long. But also, you know, our presence on the International Space Station right now is dwindling. We've been relying on Russia to take us to and from the, the space station since the space shuttle stopped flying in 2011. And our seats with Russia, we, we pay them $80 million a seat to put an astronaut on their Soyuz vehicle. We were running out of those seats, and right now we only have one American crew member on board the International Space Station. So really getting Bob and Doug, these two astronauts, up there is pretty critical so that we can continue to maintain those operations on, on board the orbiting lab, which is a very big investment for the United States. Well, what has Elon Musk said about plans for space beyond this mission, and what are the potential broader implications of the private sector's involvement in the space program? Well, Elon has been very, very clear that he started SpaceX with, you know, the purpose of creating a settlement on Mars. And so I don't think a lot of people understand that SpaceX hasn't actually launched anybody yet. This will be their first crewed flight. And getting that experience of sending people into space is going to be absolutely critical if they actually want to send people to deep space destinations like the moon and Mars. You know, people aren't meant to live in space, it takes quite a lot of engineering to keep our bodies alive and make sure that we can thrive up there. So just knowing what it takes to send these people from the ground to orbit is going to be, you know, absolutely critical for SpaceX moving forward. As for the commercial space industry, I think what we're seeing is a new era of doing business at NASA. You know, NASA has long used contractors to build vehicles, but like I said before, they've always had, you know, design input, uh, they've overseen all the operations, and they've owned the vehicles when they're done. With this new contracting method, it's really kind of relinquishing those powers to the private sector and saying, okay, you're in charge of the operations, you're in charge of the design, and you're in charge of flying these vehicles, and we will pay you, NASA will pay you to ride on these, on these capsules as if they are a customer just like anyone else. It really is a new era in space travel. We'll be glued to our TVs on Saturday. Lauren Grush for us. Lauren, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.